Today I'm going to talk about how to insert an image into a Moodle page. Kids are very, very visual learners nowadays. Um, putting images in actually does a lot to dress up your web page and it also kind of helps them understand a little bit more about what you're talking about. So I've decided I'm going to put in an image. Say I'm teaching Western Civ and I want to put in a picture of Apollo. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to type in Apollo. And I'm going to do a Google search, but that brings me to actually web pages, and I want to find an image. So I'm going to click up here where it says images, and it immediately goes to a bunch of different pictures of Apollo. Now, one of the things you may notice is that, oh, crud, there's a whole bunch of pictures of the Apollo space program. So I want to be more specific. I'm going to say Apollo God, little g. And that eliminates all the space program pro um, images, and now I just got the pictures of Apollo. Now, one of the things I would like you to notice, if you take a look at here, this is a nice little picture of Apollo, um, but it's 500 pixels by 1,007 pixels. Um, be aware that that is the width of the image, and it's going to be a very, very large file, and it's going to take a little while to download, and it's also going to squish up your Moodle a little bit. I'm going to recommend that you try to find pictures that, unless you know how to resize the images yourself using Photoshop, I'm going to suggest you go looking for images that are under 400 pixels wide. Now, right here, I have a great picture of Apollo with its only 300 pixels wide, so I'm going to click on that. Now, you notice that this is a little thumbnail. Down here is my full-size image. So I'm going to right-click on this image. I'm going to go Save Picture As, and I'm going to stick it in my follow, folder as Apollo. All right. So I've got my picture of Apollo now saved in my folder. So I'm going to close this guy down, and I'm going to go to my web page. Now, the first thing I have to do is I'm going to have to turn editing on. All right. And I want to put my little image here in the first week of school. Okay, it could say Unit 1 or whatever you want it to say, and of course this is Moodle, so it, we get the very, very common page not displayed sign, and it goes here. And so what I want to do is I'm going to talk about, this is Unit 1, the Greek gods. Now I'm going to tell you something, I have the worst spelling in the world. Um, I am hyper, hyper paranoid about the fact that parents are watching this. So every once in a while, usually what I do when I type things in, I use at least Microsoft Word as a spell checker, and then I copy and paste over. All right, uh, we'll talk about that in another tutorial. However, I want to insert my picture of Apollo. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click here in this little icon next to the little broken chain, which says insert image. It's actually a picture of a mountain, believe it or not. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a folder here. Now, I've actually already done one, but I'm going to create another folder, which I'm going to call um, Display Images. A lot of teachers have discovered that when they're doing um, their Moodle and they try to move images after they've created them, it creates a little bit of a problem. All right, what happens is all of a sudden you have all these broken links in your page. So I'm going to click on the display images, and in there I'm going to put all of the images I upload that want to be displayed on the screen. All right, so now that I've created that folder, I clicked on it, I'm now in it, I'm going to go browsing, I'm going to find my picture of Apollo, and I'm going to upload that into this folder. Great. I'm going to select that image. And you notice that up here, the URL, where exactly on Moodle it is, is now shown, and they actually get a little icon there that shows you what the picture is, just in case you forgot what you named it. I'm going to call it Apollo, where it says alternate tests. That's kind of an old-fashioned thing that happened when some browsers didn't actually display images back in the way, way back in the beginning of AOL. If it, didn't, if it couldn't download the image, it would tell you at least what you were supposed to be looking at. That is, the alternate text is very rarely used, except when they're doing um, searches. Okay, so I'm just going to say OK. And now I got my picture of Apollo. But the problem is, is I wanted to put a whole bunch of text next to this. Now watch what happens when I type. It goes, I didn't want that. I wanted to put a little biography next to Apollo. And now I can't do that. So I, there's a little trick I'm going to show you that's going to allow you to create something that looks a little bit more like a magazine. So underneath where it says Unit 1, Greek Gods, I've just clicked. I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to insert a table so I can display Apollo beside a little biography of him. So I'm going to click over the thing next to the picture is a little thing that says Insert Table. I'm going to click there. And... I'm going to create a table that's only one row long, but two columns. 
and I'm going to make it 100% of the screen. Uh, alignment, I think I'm going to have left because I want the text to be left aligned. I don't really care. Now, border thickness, I typically do not use borders. Some people like them. It kind of gives it a little offset. Just so you can see, and I'm going to type in a border thickness of 4. Cell spacing, that's how many pixels there are between the border and the starting of the text. Um, that's actually kind of nice because it doesn't jam the text right up to the edge of the border. So I'm going to put a cell spacing of, a, say, 2 and cell padding of, say, 2 as well. Okay, so I've got this big little table here. You may notice that it pushed my picture of Apollo way the heck over here, so I'm going to go control, click on it. I'm going to go control X to cut it. I'm going to go back here, control V to paste. And I got to get rid of all this junk, and that's useless. So now I got my table. Now, I would like to put in a little biography of Apollo. Well, I knew I was going to do this, so what I did is I did a search for Apollo. And I actually found this thing, uh, the, the Encyclopedia Mythica, which I actually have looked into. It is a pretty authoritative site. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip all of this information that says about him that he was Phoebus Apollo, sometimes related to the sun god. Okay, so I like this little beginning section. Now, one of the easy ways to select a bunch of text, I click at the beginning, I hold on the shift key, and I want it to go after the word sun god. And that way I copy it. All right, I'm going to go control C, copies it, I'm going to minimize this guy, and I'm going to put this information about Phoebus Apollo down beside it. So when I hit save changes, my Moodle has this nice official looking little description here. All right. And so that actually is kind of nice, and it gives a nice little look. You may notice if you look at the little kind of like beveled edges, that's what happens when you put in a border. Um, if I wanted to get the text to be a little bit bigger, I could go back and re-edit this. Um, so that I could drag the picture down, make the picture a little smaller so the text is a little bit wider. The thing. But anyway, this is one of the things you can do. It's a handy tool. It does make your Moodle a lot more interesting to the kids makes it look a little bit cooler and it's fun to do. All right.